Hi, this is Muttu. Programming and problem solving had always been one of my biggest passions. In this series of short videos, I would like to discuss and share my approaches towards solving some interesting problems. So the methodology I would like to take in these videos is to go behind what happens in the problem solving process rather than directly going to the solution or just getting into the final program which spits out the answer I want to talk about the intermediary steps what are the small intermediary steps the failed approaches which make us learn from each of them eventually leading to the final solution so I hope you will enjoy these short videos and see you later hi so let's talk about a problem called the lattice parts right so basically this is a problem which is one of the problems in project euler so it's problem number 15 but it's a very famous problem which makes you count certain number of ways how you can reach from a particular starting point to a particular target point so let's go into the details of the problem and understand it better okay so starting in the top left corner of a two by two grid and only being able to move to the right and down there are exactly six routes to the bottom right corner so if you see this two by two grid right so it's a two by two grid so you start from this top left corner right so basically how many routes are there to reach this bottom right so basically i have listed down all the six routes what you could see here right so the first route goes from here to here the second route goes from here, here, here and here and this is the third route, fourth, fifth and sixth. So exactly there are six routes to go from the top left to the bottom right. So the question is how many such routes are there in a 20 cross 20 grid? So this need not be just a 20 cross 20 grid. So when we talk about the solution approaches to this problem, we will generalize it to an n by n grid. And just 20 by 20 will be just an instance of that n by n. So see you in the next video where we develop the base case approaches and how we develop ideas to solve this problem. Hi, let us start approaching the lattice path problem. But always let's start with a small case. right? So what is the small case for the lattice path problem? So let's start with a 1 by 1 grid. Right? So a one by one grid looks exactly like this. Right? So in a one by one grid, starting from the top left corner, so this is a one by one grid. So you start from the top left corner in how many ways you can reach the bottom right. So you can go this way. So this is one possible way and you can go this way. Right? So this is the second possible way. So if I just put a table here for a grid of size one by one, there are two ways you can reach from the top left to the bottom right. So now, further to develop this idea, let us start naming, right? So what is that when I say by naming, right? So instead of saying this way, this way, let us give some kind of a naming structure so that we are able to understand the problem a little better. So let's say, right, in this one by one grid, so let's draw a one by one grid and let's just call each of the lattice joint, right? Let's first mark each of the joint and let's name it from zero. So this joint is zero, one, two and three. So now instead of just saying this way or that way, what we can say is the one possible route starts from zero, goes to one, then ends at three, which is exactly this route. The second possible route starts from 0, goes to 2 and ends at 3. So this is the second possible way. So now what exactly we have done is we have just marked each of the lattice joint. We have given a name which is nothing but a number here and we have just enumerated the path from the top left to the bottom right corner. Now if, I, if we just develop this idea further so we can just convert this problem into a little different representation. So when we draw a one by one grid, so there are exactly four lattice joints. So I can represent this by a two by two grid, right? 
So I can just put a 2 by 2 grid here and I can mark this node 0, 1, 2, 3 exactly as this. This is cell 0, this is cell 1, this is cell 2 and this is cell 3. And whatever is the paths here which we enumerated will be the paths here. Right? 0, 1, 3 is path number 1 and 0, 2, 3 is path number 2. So whenever we are given, a, whenever we are asked about how many paths are there for a grid of size n by n, so we can represent it by a grid of size n plus 1 by n plus 1 and by naming this, we are first understanding how to represent this problem. So in the next video, we will see how to use this representational structure to our advantage and see how we can build up a solution for this problem. Welcome back. So let us start with a 2 by 2 grid, right? So the 2 by 2 grid from our video number 1 was exactly like this, right? So there are exactly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 joints, right? So in a 2 by 2 grid you have got exactly 9 joints and leveraging the representation structure so I will now draw a 3 by 3 grid where each of the cell, right? So where each of the cell of this 3 by 3 grid captures each of this joint, right? So 0, 1, second joint, third, fourth, five, six, seven, and 8, right? So now the question exactly is how you can start from the cell number 0 and reach the target cell which is 8 obeying the constraints that you can either go in the right or you can go in the bottom direction. So this exactly is our question. Now we know the paths. We have enumerated the paths for this 2 by 2 grid in our second video. So it is exactly 0, 1, 2, 5, 8 and there were exactly 6 roads. So let me not get into that but let's talk about how we can attack a small case of this problem. So assuming that let's start from the cell number 7, right? So assume that if you are in cell number 7, in how many ways can you reach the target cell, which is the cell number 8? So if you are in cell, cell number 7 and obeying these constraints, so there is only one way you can reach the cell number 8. And if you are in cell number 5, also there is only one way obeying the constraints, you can reach the cell number 8. So this is the case even if you are in cell number 6 because there is only one way you can reach the cell number 8 and even if you are in the cell number 2 there is still only one way you can reach the cell number 8. So let us just write this down right. So let me again redraw the 3 by 3 square for you right and so let me write again 0 1 2 3 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So if you are in cell number 1, the number of ways you can reach the cell number 8, the target cell is only 1. And even if you are in cell number 6, there is only one way. And if you are in cell number 5, it is still one way. And if you are in cell number 1, it is still one way as you can see here. So now this is the crucial step. So we have listed down in how many ways you can reach the cell number 8 from the borders, right? Because this is the base case. Now, go one level above, right? So come to the cell number four. Ask the same question. So in how many ways you can reach the cell number eight by standing at the cell number four? So if you are in cell number four, you can either go this way, which is one root, or you can go via this way, the cell number seven, which is one root, which is exactly, you have got two ways to reach the cell number 8. So, if you are in cell number 4, you have got two ways to reach the cell number 8. So, basically what we are doing, the constraint says you can travel in the right or you can travel in the bottom. So, by being in the cell number 4, there is one possible way by traveling to the right and reaching the cell number 8 and there is one possible way by traveling to the bottom and reaching the cell number 8 and it's exactly the addition of these both ways, right? In one way you can travel to the right and reach the target 
and in one way you can travel to the bottom and reach the target. So 1 plus 1 is nothing but two possible ways. Now you come here, you come to the cell number 3 and pose the same question. right? So we are doing a bottom up construction. So first we ask it from the corner cells, then we are just going above and above. So now if you are from this cell, so what is happening? So if you, if you are in the cell, the cell number 3, right? So how you can reach the cell number 8? So if you take the right direction, in two ways you can reach the cell number 8 and you take the bottom direction, in one way you can reach the cell number 8. So the total ways you can reach the cell 8 is 2 plus 1 which is 3. And if I just draw it out for you, the three ways are 1, let me just take another marker. So the three ways are, this is one possible way, this is one possible way and this is the third possible way, right? So now just go above. So you go to the cell number one. So by taking the right direction, you can reach in one way and taking the bottom direction, you can reach in two ways. So which means two plus one, three ways you can reach the cell number A from cell number one. And now coming to our starting cell, which is cell number zero, by taking the right direction, you can reach the cell eight in three ways. And by choosing the bottom direction, you can reach the cell eight in three ways, leaving us out with the answer, which is there are six possible ways to reach the bottom right corner from our starting cell, which is a top left corner. And these exactly the six routes were the ones which were listed down in the video number two. Welcome back and this will be our last video on the lattice spots problem. So we have actually figured out in a bottom up way how many, how many ways you can reach the target cell not necessarily from the starting cell but in fact from any arbitrary cell. So for example from the cell number 4 by summing up the number of ways you can travel to the right and reach the target and going to the bottom and reaching the target as totally two possible ways, right? So that is how we exactly arrived at the solution of in how many possible ways you can reach the cell A from the starting cell. And if I just generalize this for any particular cell I comma J in this grid, you can compute the number of ways you can reach the target cell from the cell I comma J by just summing up how many ways you can reach by traveling to the bottom which is i plus 1 and j and to the right which is i comma j plus 1 right and these values are previously computed because we are following a bottom up approach. So now we will look at how exactly we have codified this solution which is very simple and which will yield us the answer for the 20 by 20 grid. So if you just look at this program right so this is a simple program and I will give the link to this program in the description of this video also. Okay, so the first line of this program, we just take an input of what is the size of the grid for which we need to compute the total number of paths. And as the second step, we are computing, we are creating a grid of size n plus 1 by n plus 1, which is exactly what we did in the whiteboard as well. And here we are setting up the base cases, right? So if you are either in the last column or if you are in the last row, there is only one particular direction, which is by traveling in the right direction or in the down direction, there is only one possible way to reach the target, target cell. And that's why we are setting up those respective cells, the number of ways to reach the target cell as one. And now we are doing our bottom up construction. So what is our bottom up construction? So we are starting from the n minus one row and n minus one column and we are computing the number of ways of how you can reach the target from each cell by computing the right cell ways plus the down cell ways, right? So the finally the value of the grid in the zero comma zero is going to tell how many paths exist from the start to the end. And this simple loop, right? This simple loop is just doing exactly the same. And finally, we are just printing out the number of paths. So let's, let's just run this program, right? So I'm just running this program for a 2 by 2 grid, right? So when I run this program for a 2 by 2 grid, we know that we should get the number of paths as 6. And 
which is exactly what we get. And for a 3 by 3 lattice, the number of ways you can reach the bottom is 20. We can probably enumerate it in a whiteboard later. And the question was, how many possible ways are there from the starting to the bottom in a 20 by 20 grid? And by running this program, and we get this big number, right? So 13784652820 is the total number of ways you can reach the bottom target right corner. I hope this was helpful. Please post any of your thoughts or questions in the comment section. And thank you for watching this video. So soon with another interesting problem, I will meet you.